Let us consider a horizontally curved W section that is connected with simple connections at the columns. The member ends are restrained against torsional rotation, but flexural and warping restraint is not provided. The horizontally curved W21 by 83 beams form a circular curve with a 30 feet radius and a span angle of 30 degrees between the columns. The service load mid-span rotation is limited to a maximum of 2 degrees. The objective is to verify that the curved beam is adequate for the imposed loads. The uniformly distributed load along the member circumference, including the beam self-weight, is 1.5 kips per foot. For the surfaceability limit state, the load is only 1 kip per foot. The material of the W section is A992 steel. A way to model this is with beam elements using a software like SAP2000, where a curved member is drawn using the curved member function while assigning fixed supports at the location of the columns. First, we define a grid using cylindrical coordinates. Then, we type down the number of grid lines along each of the axes as well as the grid spacing in inches. Because the curve is two-dimensional, no need to have more than one grid line in the Z direction. Then, we draw the member using the curved member drawing function. To accurately model the curved beam, we have to make sure that the number of elements within a span is at least 10 to 20 elements. That can be done by changing the number of linear segments. We then have to import the section from the steel section directory of SAP 2000. We import the AISC latest edition and look for W21 by 83. We then assign the section to the drawn curved member. We make sure to choose the right material when importing and assigning the section. We assign fixed constraints at the columns 30 degrees apart as specified in the problem dimensions. Afterwards, we release the major flexural degree of freedom at the ends to not constrain flexure as defined in the problem. Assigning a hinged or pin condition here will be wrong because the torsion is restrained at the end. Also, we cannot release the degrees of freedom at the supports themselves because they refer to the global coordinates while flexure is released about the major axis of the section itself, which is curved. We assign the uniform load in the gravity direction as 1.5 kips per foot. Please pay attention to the chosen units in the program. SAP 2000 allows typing of the units, which will then convert the values automatically to the system units as long as the syntax is correct. Because the self-weight of the section is included in the 1.5 kips per foot load, we will have to set the self-weight multiplier of the dead load case to zero, such that the self-weight is not considered twice. To consider the second order effects and avoid having to amplify the results of a first order analysis, we modify the load case type to be nonlinear and include both P delta and large displacement effects.
One last thing that needs to be done before running the analysis is modification of the torsional constant. Most commercial finite element programs use the basic beam finite element formulation, which does not have the capability to model the warping stiffness. In this case, only the saint venot stiffness is utilized in the analysis, which causes an overestimate of the torsional deformations for most open cross-sections. The accuracy can be improved by using equivalent torsion constants. When the warping is fixed at both ends, the effective torsional constant is the following. When the warping is fixed at one end and free at the other, the effective torsional constant is the following. Where gamma is the developed length of the curved beam multiplied by the square root of the shear modulus multiplied by the torsional constant divided by the elastic modulus times the warping constant. The torsional constant and warping constant can be obtained from Table 1-1 of the AISC Construction Manual. For example, we can obtain the values for W21 by 83 as follows. In SAP 2000, the torsional constant can be modified by selecting the members where the modification is needed and assigning property modifiers. There, it is only possible to assign a multiplier to the original parameter to obtain the desired one. And thus, we should calculate the ratio of the effective torsional constant to that of the original torsional constant. For the case of warping fixed on one end only, the value is the following. Then, we would simply need to plug that in and apply as follows. We simply now proceed to running the analysis. No need to run the modal load case. We first extract the maximum bending moment about the major axis from the moment diagram. Which is observed to be 566 kip inch. We then extract the maximum shear force, which occurs at the supports as shown in this shear diagram. By observing the values at the supports, the maximum shear is 11.7 kips. We also extract the maximum torsional moments which occur at the supports as shown in this torsion diagram. By observing the values at the supports, the maximum torsion is 98.3 kip inch. The available shear strength is determined using AISC specification section G 2.1. First, we need to check the slenderness of the web. And because the inequality is satisfied, CV1 is equal to 1. The area of the web is then calculated as follows, from which the nominal shear strength is calculated, which then is reduced by the reduction factor phi and compared to the required shear strength and the member is concluded to have adequate shear strength. The available flexural strength is determined using AISC specification section F2. First, we need to check the slenderness of the section in flexure. From AISC specifications table B 4.1b, we get the limiting flange and web slenderness ratios. Upon comparison, we see that the section is compact. We start by evaluating lateral torsional buckling and for that the plastic bending moment is required. And from the equation mentioned in the previous video about the design of horizontally curved members, the factor CBS is adjusted using the following equation, where it is usually 1 for straight, simply supported members with a uniform load. Theta B should be taken in radians. 
The length used to calculate the lateral torsional buckling moment is the developed length of the beam. From AISC manual table 3-3, LP and LR can be extracted. Then, using equation F2-2 from the AISC specification, we can find the bending capacity of the member. We reduce and compare and conclude that the member is sufficient in flexure. For torsion strength calculations of open sections, it is a little more complicated and very critical in horizontally curved members. SAP 2000 has torsional strength calculations and design only for closed sections. The second order uniformly distributed torsional force can be calculated from the torsion value at the ends as follows. We will then need to calculate the torsional functions by referring to AISC Design Guide 9, Appendix B. For that, we need to calculate the ratio L over A, where A is taken from AISC Design Guide 9, Appendix A. Other values are also relevant for calculating stresses later on. At the midspan, the value of the first torsional function is 0.18. For the remaining three torsional functions at the mid-span, the same procedure is followed and the values are 0, minus 0 0.497 and 0. The same is done for the values of the torsional functions at the ends and we end up with these values. Then we refer back to AISC Design Guide 9 Chapter 4 to find the warping normal stress using the torsional function corresponding to theta double prime and the torsional shear stress using the torsional function corresponding to theta prime. The thickness is used to calculate the shear force in the respective element. And finally, the warping shear stress using the torsional function corresponding to theta triple prime. This produces shear forces in the flanges only for W sections. As mentioned in the previous video, we calculate the available warping stress, out of plane flexural stress, and the interaction of normal stresses. In this case, we see that the member is indeed adequate for normal stresses induced by flexure and torsional warping. We then calculate the available shear stress. Then check the shear stresses in the web and flange due to the shear force. We then check the total shear in the flange and the web and compare them to the available shear stress. Because both are less than 30, the member is adequate for shear stress effects caused by torsion, warping and the shear force. For determining the deflection, we can create a new serviceability load case with the lower uniform load of 1 kip per foot. And we extract a torsion value at the member ends equal to 66 kip inch. We can then determine the equivalent uniform distributed torsion as follows. From previous calculations, we know the expression for theta at the midspan in terms of the distributed torque MRZ. So theta is calculated as follows, which gives a value less than 2 degrees and thus the serviceability condition is met. Please note that reading the rotation values in the FEM software will lead to overly conservative rotations. The reason is that most commercial FEM software do not account for warping stiffness and even with the modified torsional constant, the rotations might still be conservatively large and unreliable as shown here. To obtain more reliable results without doing hand calculations, modeling using shell and solid elements is a viable option, but makes the verifications using the member stresses more time consuming. A suitable software for this application is Abacus. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.